In this training, we'll learn how to make a capture action more precise and flexible by manually modifying the capture definition. We'll also learn how to split a single line of text into two separate fields. This is a list of products on a web page, and I need to collect all the information in this list, starting with the product name and color. I've already created my list, and I can see each product name in the Capture Text Preview window. I notice that the product name and the color, surrounded by parentheses, are being collected in the same field. I want to split this into two separate fields. To do this, I need to open the Refine Captured Text window. First, I'll select the action I want to refine, the product name. Then, I'll choose Refine Captured Text from the Selected Action menu. This is the content window and displays the text I'm currently capturing. This is the Capture Definition window, showing me the definition currently being used to determine which text and how much text to capture. This is the Capture Text Preview window, where I can see how the Capture Definition will extract the target data. Right now, the Capture Definition contains only the field name, between two percent signs, which simply collects everything in the content window into the specified field, product name. We define which data to capture in this field by adding boundaries. For example, if I highlight with my cursor from the beginning to just before the parentheses in the target text, I will see a parentheses appear in the capture definition. This is a boundary meaning that the definition will only collect data from the content window that appears before the first parentheses in the text and deposit it into the product name field. But remember, I want to capture both the product name and the color, so I'm going to insert my cursor into the definition by clicking on it and, after the parentheses, manually type the color field name, percent sign, color, percent sign. I now can see the color being captured in the captured text preview, but it has an extra character, a close parentheses. So I'm going to type a close parentheses as my final boundary in the capture definition at the end, which instructs the definition to only capture the text inside the parentheses into the color field. Notice that the extra parentheses no longer appears in my captured text preview. To confirm that my definition works in all cases, I'm going to use the Next Item button to show each product name from the list in turn, while carefully watching the Captured Text Preview window. This item shows no text in the Captured Text Preview. This is because my capture definition is looking for an item that has a set of parentheses at the end, and this product has no color, and therefore no set of parentheses. To compensate for this, I'm going to create a second capture definition. To do this, I'll click on the New button, followed by Capture Definition. Notice that it automatically populates with the Product Name field. Because the second definition is meant for items that contain only the product name and not a color, we'll leave this as is. This will act as a backup definition, so that when the first definition fails, the agent will try the second one. To save my changes, I'll click on Save. Notice that the Captured Text Preview shows all product names being captured correctly. The color is now captured whenever it's present in the product name. Because there are multiple pages in this list, I need to test my agent to make sure that the capture definition I created works across all pages of the list. To test the agent, I'll choose Test Agent, and then Start. When the test finishes, I can check my data in the Testing Results window to confirm that it's been extracted correctly. This concludes Part 1 of the training on using the Refined Captured Text window where we learned how to make an action more flexible and precise by manually writing a new capture definition.